Hello, this is the third lecture of our composition workshop. In this lecture, we are going to analyze Luciano Berrios' Oking for voice and five players composed in 1968. Unfortunately, this is the, uh, the only score I have. This is a little uh, dirty with many annotations. I'm sorry for that. But it doesn't distract much, in my opinion. Let's listen to it, then we are going to analyze it. Thank you. 
Before we go into the analysis, I'd like to make some explanation. Um, the first of them is you see here uh, lyrics, uh, some symbols. Those are phonetic alphabet, those are not words, those are not um, um, those, uh, those don't belong to a particular language. Those are international phonetic alphabet and the idea is that the words Martin Luther King that we hear that we hear at the end, Luther and uh, King here. Martin Luther King, beginning from this point, we hear the entire word. It comes gradually. It comes gradually. It begins um, it begins only with only phonetic alphabet and then we hear a ma from Martin and then ma and again. And the first word we hear is king here. The first recognizable word and that comes uh, quite late in the piece. So, and another thing is the musical characteristic of the piece is uh, the accented notes. There are accented notes, F at the beginning, and then very quiet other tones. F and then A is very quiet, pianissimo, uh, and then B also very quiet, C sharp, as well and then here on A we have an accent again pianissimo very quiet sounds and then here we have another accent everything has a reason we are going to see that let's begin with the analysis this is the pitch set Berio Luciano Berio used in this in this work This is the pitch set. As I said in the previous lecture, if the focus of the music is on a particular chord, then this chord has probably a, a special construction. If the focus of the music is on a special pitch set, then this pitch set has probably um, a special, as, so, something special in it. And in my opinion, the characteristic of this pitch set is the following. If we uh, separate the pitch set into three parts, the beginning part, beginning with F, we have kind of whole tone scale, a particular combination of intervals, major third and major second, and then we have the same the same structure here this time downwards major third and minor second the combination this is the first one and it is combined and then there's a C sharp in the middle I think this is an addition there could be a better explanation for this please try it please try to explain it better than me but this is what i could find in the structure so there are seven pitches in the pitch set seven pitch classes in the pitch set and that means there are five pitch classes which haven't been used in this structure this will have a meaning in the Next stage, please keep in mind that five pictures have not been used in this in the main structure. So, and then Berio make uh, three different segments uh, using his pitch set. The first segment contains uh, only the pitches of the whole tone scale. And then the second segment begins also with F and use other pitches. Uh, 
Uh, the last one is B natural, by the way, I forget to write it. And then the last segment is longer, and you see the segments gets gradually longer. And this is the last segment. Uh, what is the reason of this combination? I don't know, actually, I couldn't find any principle in this consideration. There are some unifying uh, gestures, for example, here it begins with F and uh, goes upwards, and then we have this similar motif here beginning with D and uh, goes downwards, and here the same, a larger gesture, and also here. So, but uh, I couldn't find any particular principle for that. So, you see here our melodic line, uh, consisting of three segments, and it is repeated four times. This is the same, the same melodic line. And then you see some whole notes. Some notes are written as whole notes. This one, this one, this one. And some notes are written as stemless note heads. You can stop the video at this point and try to find out why these pitches are accented and why the other ones are not accented. What is the relation between them? If you look at the accented notes, F, A, B, C sharp, they, this is actually the order, this is actually the melodic line here, F, A, B, C sharp. He takes F and then A, the next one, next one it comes here, he skips that one, the first one, and this is accented. And then B comes next, the next B after A is here and then it is accented. C sharp, after B we have the first C sharp here and it is accented. What comes next? F, the next F is here and it is accented and A, it is also accented. Then we have A flat, the next A flat comes here and it is accented. B flat right after that, D right after that. Uh, you see there's a, a collision. He should accent everything. Sometimes he has to go out of the structure he built and he does that. At that point he skips this uh, pitch which should have been accented actually and he takes the next C sharp. This is what I mean with finding a balance between structural working and musical considerations. Imagine that he didn't make this decision and continued giving an accent for all the notices that would uh, destroy all the musical sounds here. So he made a musical decision and he skipped the C sharp and he accented the next C sharp. And then the system works again. We need B and the next B is here and it is accented, etc. So and you will you see also some other accents. This is just a repetition of the accent. B was accented and it is accented again here. A was accented and it is accented again. And sometimes he gives accents to the nose that shouldn't be accented, like this F natural here. Actually, F natural shouldn't be accented. Only the notes written as whole notes should have been accented. This is also a musical decision. This structure works until the end. We were here. D and C sharp and B is here. And then we need F. F is here, A is here, and next B is here, I'm here, and D, C sharp, G, again D, this is the same here, beginning with D, excuse me, 
It's once again a musical decision. He skips B and takes the next B. He skips this B, this B flat, and takes next B flat. And then A flat is here. B flat here. Those are musical decisions. Sometimes he chooses to skip the next pitch. And we are at the beginning here. And this is the end of the piece. After that, he begins to resolve, to resolve the structure. I found this table in the internet. It is in a very low resolution, but it contains some additional information. For example, you see these small dots. Let's go back to the score. Uh, I picked a random place in the score and you see some um, some figurations here in the piano. The interesting part is the our melodic line is always in the same octave register. F is always F4, B flat is always B flat 4, A flat is always A flat 4. D is always D5, etc. But you see also F sharp, E natural, E flat. If you see E flat, it is in the same octave register. E natural, always E natural 3. If you remember, five tones are not used in the structure. Unused pitches are here, C, E flat, E natural, F sharp, and G, and you see them here, E natural and C natural, E natural, C natural. Those are embellishments we hear in the piano. They are always in the piano. The main line we hear in other instruments, also in the piano, but also in the other instruments, but the embellishments, embellishing tones only in the piano. the consistency in the octave register if you hear G natural it is always uh, G5 E flat always uh, E flat 6 that creates uh, every pitch has its own octave register reserved for that pitch that creates a clarity that, pre that creates a consistency in the piece so and after that point the system begins to lose itself, and especially here, this is the end of the piece. He didn't transport the structure he constructed to the music, but he listened to the structure and he made musical decisions. Sometimes he didn't obey the structure. He preferred his musical feeling instead. In my opinion, this is a very important uh, aspect in composition, finding the balance between structural working, structural thinking, and musical decisions. Now we are going to listen to the piece only by looking at this simplified version as this reduction, which only shows the uh, structure on the one line. And at that point, this is not the end of the piece, I will switch to the other table, to more detailed table in low resolution, you should look at the uh, at the last cycle at cycle five. So, let's listen to it.
And you also see how important the instrumentation is. The entire piece is actually only one single melodic line, but he does uh, so much with the instrumentation, with different playing technique, only on one tone. He uses uh, tremolo, sulponcello. All these make the music interesting. That's all for this lesson. Thank you for watching and see you in the next lesson.